ahead. Uh, welcome to the 14th MedResults Network webinar in our educational webinar series. I'm Jamie Parrott, President of MedResults Network, and as always, I just want to thank everyone for taking time out of their day, uh, out of your day, to attend this presentation. And as I mentioned during our last webinar, although the principal focus of MedResults hasn't changed, we're, uh, we're still focused on cost savings for the aesthetic community. Our educational focus has grown tremendously over the last nine months, which is why we continue to hold these free webinars for you. Um, in my conversation with our partners, including MERS Aesthetics, who's here with us today, I'm repeatedly told about the importance of education to a practice. And I agree that if our members are not able to successfully use and sell the aesthetic medical products and technologies they acquire, um, and when I say use, I mean it in the sense of delivering superior results that don't meet but exceed your patient's expectations. And if you can't do this and your staff doesn't know how to sell the products you offer, you're going to have a much harder time developing the loyal customer base uh, that you deserve. So you know that the more education you and your practice receive, the better equipped you'll be to satisfy your patients and keep them returning to your practice, which is why we're so focused on these webinars. And I, I hope you're enjoying uh, the webinar series as we progress. While we're on the topic of the importance of education, I want to share some additional information with everyone. Uh, after the end of the presentation, I encourage you to visit our website to view some of our previously recorded webinars or to register for a future event. And we do have another webinar scheduled right now on September 10th with special guest Brian Akunzo. He's the founder of Akara Partners. Uh, he'll be discussing the best business practices to increase aesthetic medical sales and profits. And his group is also holding a major educational event called the REACH Digital Marketing Summit in New York City on September 19th and 20th. So if any of you guys are on the East Coast, I highly recommend you attend. Uh, our members actually receive an exclusive 30% discount to this event. So if you're interested, feel free to contact me after the presentation. I'll give you more information about it. Now you may have noticed a little lull in our webinar schedule, and this is because I'm headed back to Australia next Tuesday through the end of the month. So if you need anything after the 18th, don't hesitate to reach out to our Director of Membership, Hillary Anderson. She's my right hand. She's going to be able to help you with anything you need, even though I'm going to be off the grid for a little while. This is our 14th educational webinar since November 6th last year, and today's webinar is presented by Brittany Vanderban. She's the Associate Director of Portfolio Solutions for MERS Aesthetics. And she actually joined us for our last webinar featuring all therapy and a pre presentation on holding successful events. Today, um, she and Bill Brandon, who's MERS's very own clinical photography pro, put together a presentation that is focused on the value of using photos in your aesthetic practice. We all know the importance of using before and after photos or having a lookbook that prospective patients can see. However, very few practices that I've met personally take full advantage of the opportunities presented by these photos and, and actually maximize their potential to generate new business. Um, most often we find that before and after photos are posted on the web, but I haven't seen many that are actually highly visible in a business. So Brittany is going to give you an easy to follow formula to turn your photos into thousands of dollars for your business. And as a final reminder, after the end of the presentation, if you have questions for Brittany uh, or for their photography pro bill, please feel free to reach out to me or use that unique uh, MERS Aesthetics email that you see here, mrn at mers.com. Uh, or even better, after the presentation, you're going to receive a short survey, as always. It's going to pop up uh, right, after the, right after the presentation. It's going to ask you if you're interested in receiving additional information. Simply tick the Yes box, and Brittany can reach out to you directly. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Brittany Vanderband of MERS Aesthetics. Thank you, Jamie, and uh, thank you everyone for taking some time out of your day to learn more about photography best practices. Uh, Jamie has kind of introduced and gave a great overview of what we're going to discuss today, but to give a little background on me, I grew up around aesthetics. Um, my father's actually a plastic surgeon. I've worked for a few practices covering everything from the front desk to sales and marketing and operations, and uh, have been working with Althera which was purchased by Mertz last July. So that's been a little over two years now. Uh, so I'm now part of the Mertz Portfolio Solutions team, and I'm very excited to talk with you all today about photography. Uh, we're going to discuss the tools that are needed, uh, five keys to successful, successful photography, utilizing photography during the consultation, preparing the room, equipment, and your patient, 
and ongoing training as well as following up and what that follow-up appointment looks like. So the first question is why? Why is photography so important? And of all of the practices we've worked with around the nation, this is the Achilles heel in almost every one of them. Even if you have an amazing photography room, a great setup, Photography can always be improved upon, and in terms of utilizing it for marketing purposes, like Jamie mentioned, there's always a huge opportunity there. And it's not about the tools. So whether you're using an amazing camera setup, you have a Canon 70D DSLR, or you're using a tablet or an Apple iPhone or an iPad, the quality now and the value that we really bring is more so related to the consistency and the setup and the process, not so much the tools. So we can really work as a company in terms of the training that we provide to set you up with a consistent, uh, great photography room process that provides those great clinical photos for you. And, um, and again, it's not about the tools. So whether you have a 3D imaging system, this was from Dr. Kenkel out of UT Southwestern. When we received our lower facelift or under chin area lift indication, uh, we used a 3D imaging system to quantify that. And so this is just a photo to show that result. But even a photo taken with an iPhone, uh, although there's inconsistencies here with the backdrop or with the clothing uh, color, you can still see that by having that consistent setup or that similar angle, all of that is so key to showing the patient's results. So um, just to provide a good outcome. So it's not about the tools. Photography training, though, is key, and we're going to touch on this throughout the rest of the, our time today. Uh, the head position is important. Looking at the five views that we take and the tools that are used will really allow this to be a successful thing in your practice. And the five keys to successful photography, it's all about consistency. You're going to hear that a lot today, but it's about consistent lighting, head position, background, distance, height and length, and then facial expressions for your patient. And it all starts with the consultation. So when you're looking at the paperwork that you're giving to a patient when they first walk in the door, what are the areas that they're interested in improving? And we use on the right here an aesthetic care plan. Every company has these and it's really a great opportunity to have them circle areas or write down concerns and identify what those patient goals are iPads have been the best tool for us as a company during that consultation process, and it does not have to be a perfect clinical photo, but being able to utilize a simulation tool or take a quick snapshot with the iPad allows you to set proper expectations for that person, and patients don't look at themselves typically from that profile view, so that side view can become very powerful when you take a photo, set it down in front of them, and, um, and these photos are really helpful as they come back for a follow-up and it's really laying the groundwork so that they know what to expect and can even compare it maybe to some before and afters depending on if they're interested in injectables or a non-invasive lifting solution or skincare. So it's a really great way to set the foundation and start off on the right foot with your patient. So we know what inconsistent photography looks like. Even though there's a consistent backdrop, what's wrong with these pictures? So we always go through the training process, use these as a tool, and maybe point out some things that could be improved. So the only piece that's really missing or lacking in this photo is the head angle is a little different, and the distance from the tip of the nose to the cheek is different. So anytime you're working on photos, we typically like to have the tip of the nose touching the cheek and I'll show you some examples of that a little later in the presentation. But whether or not you have a consistent photo to start, the most important thing when they come back is to match that photo. So you would want the head angle to be adjusted and the tip of the nose to the cheek to be the same to make sure that it's consistent. Here as well, very good consistent setup. The only thing that's wrong is the, the clothing should be covered. So it just becomes a little bit of a distraction point where now, if the black drop was back, the black drape was covering the clothing, you'd be able to see that great improvement in the under chin area and along the jawline with all therapy. So that's where the power comes in. And even if the photo is not perfect, where we can't see the tip of his cheek over here, this photo matches, which makes it powerful. It's consistent positioning, consistent lighting, and the size and the same backdrop is important. So I love this one too because this patient came in, he had had some people ask if he had lost weight, but didn't really see a great improvement. 
That being said, because of the consistent photography, by showing him his profile view, he actually was so excited that he had an additional treatment done. So not only does this photo speak millions of words, but it really did generate thousands of dollars in additional revenue for the practice. And that's the power of a consistent photo. So looking at setting up your room, the first step is to select a room or an area for photos that can be used on an ongoing basis and is constantly available. Uh, hopefully you can set aside a room dedicated to photography, but knowing that there's different practices of different sizes and you may have a lot of different things going on in your rooms, making sure that it's most readily available is important and that it's the ideal setup. What wall should we use to take the photos against? So evaluating and looking at the lighting becomes very important. So when you walk in a room, looking up, as you can see in the bottom right photo here, to make sure that wherever your backdrop is, that it's centered under a light, a best practice would be to grab a staff member, grab an iPad, and then if you have two walls that you're evaluating, take a photo with the patient centered under each light and see which one provides the most even lighting on the face. Maybe have them turn to their left and the right, just to make sure that you're selecting the correct wall for the best photos. Another question to ask is, are there windows in the room? Uh, if there's windows, then you really wanna make sure that you're changing that room if possible, or provide blackout drapes. Second, you want to set up your photography equipment. So whether you're using a camera or an iPad, uh, using a tripod is really important for positioning and steadiness. Keeping the settings constant and leaving it in a fixed position where the only thing that you're maybe taking off is the camera or maybe the only thing you're removing is the iPad. As a company, we found that iPads work best because you can pick up an iPad and train someone pretty easily on how to utilize that and you can enable a grid. So if you have a camera where you can enable a grid uh, on the screen, it's definitely a best practice for consistency purposes. Lighting is the next thing to evaluate. It should always be consistent and uniform and you want to avoid sunlight and windows and prevent shadows and overexposure, which we'll speak to a little bit more. Stools are the next piece. So having two stools is ideal, uh, whether you're taking body shots or, um, or the face, the face you can definitely have the patient seated. Uh, for body shots, sometimes there's foot boards that can be used as well. And you want one stool for the patient and one for the staff member. And that patient stool should be lowered all the way. And then the background, using a solid blue or back, black backdrop is recommended. So with any questions at this point, please feel free to take photos of your photo setup or if you have any specific questions about your photography room, feel free to email again mrn at mertz.com with those questions. For those of you that are utilizing iPads or maybe interested in utilizing iPads for your photos, here's just a couple quick tips. Uh, on the iPad, you can go to settings, which is that little gray wheel, go to photos and camera, and enable the grid. And sometimes you have to turn it on a couple times, but then go back to your camera and you should see in the photos here on the bottom that gray line appear and uh, it blocks the face out in quadrants, which allows us to kind of use those landmarks to take consistent photos, whether you're taking it now, two weeks from now, or six months from now. So that's a really great best practice. As well on the bottom here, you can see that by tapping the screen, on the iPad, you can adjust the lighting. So by tapping a dark area, it's going to white out the face. If you tap different areas on the face, it'll allow for the exposure to set and it'll focus the photo. So that allows you to kind of adjust a little bit for that better clinical outcome. The third step is complete uh, dedicated staff training. So it's really key to identify one or two key staff members that will be responsible for taking photos. Uh, making sure that they're role playing with one another and practicing the photography, uh, maybe doing some difficult cases where you have someone lift their chin or look around the room uh, so that they can practice verbally coaching the patient on the positions that they're going to be in. Practicing the five steps or five sets of clinical photos beginning to finish and then critiquing and following up as well. So whether it's the front desk when the patient walks in the door, making sure the patient's face is washed or instructing them to wash the face, that'll allow that process to speed up so that it saves the staff time and it saves the patient time and just provides a better experience for them. The fourth point is patient preparation. So making sure that they have natural skin, their face should be washed dry, free of makeup or skin products, clothing and jewelry, so using that black drape to cover clothing or making sure that the clothing isn't obstructing the area that you're trying to photograph, 
removing all jewelry and um, the hair too. So making sure you're pulling back the hair and utilizing a headband as a best practice. You also can utilize something that we've, we've kind of pulled together based on what the practice has and what their protocol looks like, but you can create a photo checklist. And this is very helpful as you're starting out for staff members to kind of follow and check the box a little bit until it becomes more natural. Uh, even those that have been doing photography for a long time may even have some pointers here just to kind of touch on. And then patient positioning. So we talked about the right profile, right oblique, straightforward, left oblique and left profile. And those five photos are really key. Uh, you can see in the right and left oblique that the tip of the nose should be close to touching the cheek if possible. And that becomes very reproducible when that person comes back. Oftentimes when taking these photos too, people will lift their chin. So we use the anatomical landmark down on the bottom here called the Frankfurt horizontal line by palpating and feeling under for the infraorbital rim and then going straight over to the ear canal, you can see where that line is. And if you put a pen up to that area just as a measure, if the pen is lifted, then you know that they need to put their chin down and make sure that that is level. So it's a really great way to make sure the head is in a consistent position. And this will help for any of your photos, whether you're doing injectables, non-invasive lifting, or utilizing skincare. Really quickly now, I just wanted to show the photographic process, and uh, we have a quick video that we'll play. The photographic process. Have the guest sit down on the stool and face forward. Once the guest is seated, take the time to explain the five different positions they'll be moved through. The right profile, the right oblique, looking directly into the camera, the left oblique, and the left profile. Have the guests keep their eyes level so that they're not looking up or down. If the guest is continually looking around, you may instruct them to close their eyes and then open them just as you're ready to take the photo. Have the guests remove all expressions. You may instruct the guests to artificially yawn and then close their mouth with their teeth gently touching and their lips closed to help eliminate any expressions. Next, evaluate the Frankfurt horizontal line. This is an imaginary line that is drawn from the bottom of the eye socket or infraorbital rim to the top of the ear canal. It is a best practice to actually palpate or feel this rim. The next step is to ensure the iPad is as close to the guest as possible. Then, zoom in with the iPad so the guest's pupils are in alignment with the vertical lines of the grid. And position the grid's top horizontal line parallel with the cheekbones or infraorbital rims. The entire face and neck should be captured in this image. Taking the photos. The first image to be captured will be the profile view of the guest's left side by moving the guest to their right. Confirm the guest is in the proper position with the Frankfurt horizontal line parallel to the floor. Tap the screen to focus the iPad and it will automatically adjust the exposure. You may press the button to take the photo. The second image to capture is the oblique view of the left side. Instruct the guest to slowly move to their left until their nose is aligned with the cheek and the Frankfurt horizontal line is still perpendicular to the floor. Repeat the same process as before to take the photo. The third image will capture the frontal view. Be sure to validate the proper position. No tilting side to side, and the Frankfurt horizontal line is properly positioned. Then take the photo. The fourth image will capture the oblique view of the right side. Have the guest slowly move to the left until the nose is in alignment with the cheek. Repeat the same process as before to take the photo. Finally, have the guest move to the left so the right profile is visible. Once the guest is in the proper position, 
take the food. Conclusion. Photography is a critical component to documenting the outcomes with aesthetic procedures. Great. So again, I think that video provides a very good overview of how to take the photos and again, selecting those two key staff members and allowing them to practice with your staff as well as some of your patients will really help in improving and speeding up the phot photographic process. So some best practices, just reiterating what was highlighted in the video, really showing the patient those positions and transitions versus just the verbal instruction will seriously help. So having your staff members sit on the patient's stool and physically go from position to position for that patient really does speed up that process and then re replacing uh, the patient with, on the stool um, versus just the verbal instruction. Instructing them to have their chin down and relaxing and removing all expressions. So that's really key because a lot of patients don't like the under chin area and so we're used to lifting our, our chin a lot. So um, using that Frankfurt horizontal line, relax and remove all expression before taking the photo. If you find that your patient is clenching their jaw or not really relaxing very well, have them yawn and gently close their mouth with the jaw and lips relaxed and uh, upper and lower teeth gently touching. And ensuring good posture is key as well. If you have someone slouching, we really want to make sure that they're sitting up straight and shoulders and head are aligned. Uh, once you have that good setup again, really the only piece of equipment that needs to be moved is the tripod. So the bar that's kind of adjusted based on the height of the patient. Having them place their hands in a comfortable position or at their sides resting uh, flat on their thighs is ideal and then looking straight ahead. And again, if they're looking all over the place or their head is moving, just have them close their eyes and reopen. So it's very quick, quick and easy talking points. Chin down, uh, sit up straight, look straight ahead. One, two, three, click. So follow-up appointment, and this is really important as well, being prepared. So making sure that your staff is reviewing the patient forms, going back to that consultation, what goals or expectations were set right off the bat. Review what treatment was provided and review the photos ahead of time. And that'll really help to ensure that that follow-up appointment goes smoothly. Have a plan. Uh, we know that some patients come back and they may not be completely satisfied or happy. So how can we make sure that they leave happy? And uh, that happy patient is going to really continue to generate thousands of dollars for you, not just the lifetime value, but the opportunity that you have for patient referrals. A happy patient, we really want to make sure that we're capturing a testimonial. Make sure you have a signed consent form so you can use those great before and after photos for a lookbook. And uh, having them printed and around in your practice is key. And then maybe invite that patient too to come and speak at your next event and talk about their personal experience. So those patient ambassadors can become an extremely powerful tool for you moving forward. Next steps is to secure their next scheduled appointment and continue to build that relationship with the patient. So those are really the follow-up pointers. Increasing that patient awareness is key as well. So not just internally in your practice, but how can we continue to use those before and afters? And so we live in the selfie area now, uh, so we really wanna make sure that patients are posting their own photos. And this continues to build, uh, build your reputation online, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. Uh, Real self is a big area and although Real self tends to be a little bit more negative. It's almost like Yelp, where you know unhappy people go to complain. Uh, it is great to see the reviews that are on Real Self and continue to leverage those. So again, letting your patient know that it may be a little bit more negative, but there's lots of great information and personal experiences that you can speak to. Uh, as a physician, it's a really great way, or a provider, it's a really great way to build your online reputation as well. So responding to blogs or newsletters, um, dispelling myths through patient posts. It's a really awesome opportunity to continue building your, your footprint in the social media arena. Building patient testimonials online and online and in-office lookbooks as we discussed. So this is a selfie of a smiling patient during a oral therapy treatment and this is just worth a million words and thousands of dollars to your practice when it's leveraged in the right way. So in summary, we know now why it's important to have a consistent photography setup. It's not about the tools, it's really about that consistency. 
and the five keys to successful photography. We've touched on it earlier, but consistency is key. So as long as we have that in place, uh, you'll be good to go. It starts with the consultation as we discussed, making sure that you're preparing and have a dedicated room, the equipment is set up properly, and that the patient preparation process is, is buttoned up. Uh, practice makes perfect, so that continuous training, making sure your staff members are up to date and that you're critiquing and following up and reviewing photos on an ongoing basis, and then capitalizing on the follow-up appointment. So again, if you have questions about MRN at Mertz.com, that's where you can send those. And, um, and next, I just wanted to provide a little overview of Mertz North America. So you've heard me discuss the device, the injectable, the skincare line. We are partnering now with MRN in a really great way where we can leverage the tools that we have, the training capacity, and the special value to you as a provider. So Mertz Aesthetics is one of three divisions under Mertz North America. We have our device, which is all therapy. We have our injectables, Radius, Elotero, Xeomin, Esclera, and we have our skincare line with Neocutis. Skin Evading Solutions really starts with the aesthetic care plan and the opportunity that we have now with the Mertz portfolio of products is to treat any skin type any time of year. So we can really treat all year round because it's not a laser, it's using ultrasound. Uh, we can treat using the fillers and the neurotoxins and um, really provide a great clinical outcome for your patients. Here's an overview of the portfolio solutions, just to give you a, a visual. So we do have our device, our injectable, and our skincare line. Specifically looking at the device, it is a very innovative technology. The lift and the non-invasive FDA cleared lift is often the void in a lot of cosmetic practices today. So we want to make sure that we're asking the question about how deep does your technology go? What temperature does it reach? Is it precise? And are you able to see and treat? And the answer in regards to that with all therapy is, we go down to those surgical depths non-invasively. We're able to target and uh, treat to the correct temperature to denature that collagen, causing new collagen to form. And it's very precise, um, not treating the surface of the skin, but only targeting those deep structures. And the visualization that we have allows us to treat very safely. So it's a very, very safe, tried and true technology. We have clinical proven, clinically proven results, whether it's in the device arena with all therapy or Selfina, injectables, as you can see, and then the skincare line as well. So it's really generating collagen from the structure of the face all the way to the surface. The next piece that I wanted to touch on was training and the fact that we provide sales training, clinical training, marketing training on an ongoing basis is a huge benefit. And that's one thing that we really leverage in our relationship with you all. The marketing tools, this is just an overview of some of the different marketing tools that are available, whether it's uh, digital, uh, online, helping with your website, because we know that website traffic is key, using the physician locator tools that are available, uh, optimizing your social media uh, impact, and continuing to utilize those before and afters in each of those areas as well. So again, if you have questions, please feel free to email us at mrn at mertz.com to schedule your in-office meeting with your Mertz representative or to learn more about our products. Feel free to email us today. Thank you. Wow, Brittany, thank you so much for your presentation today. I, I thought it was excellent. And I think the key takeaway here for everyone is that you can provide the best clinical outcomes, but if you're not taking photos to document uh, those outcomes, you're not going to maximize your revenue potential. So thank you again, Brittany. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed the presentation today and, and that you'll join us for the next installment in our educational webinar series on September 10th. Uh, you can go back to our website to register for that today. And um, if anybody has questions, please, like Brittany said, reach out to uh, her at mrn at mers.com. Feel free to reach out to me directly at jamie, J-A-M-I-E, at medresultsnetwork.com. And as a quick reminder, there is a small uh, survey that we're going to ask you to fill out. It's going to pop up as soon as we close the presentation. So thank you again. Uh, have a great weekend, and we will see you in September. Bye-bye.